Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about depression, and I want to ask a question that I think has a really obvious answer if you think about it, but it's a question we don't really ask very often, and that is, is depression strictly an individual problem? Like, is depression a mental illness that affects only individuals, or does it have a social and cultural component? One of the questions that I've seen people ask that has a pretty clear answer is, is depression contagious? And there is some very compelling psychological research that says yes, depression is contagious. It can spread through social networks. I'm someone who's just struggled on and off with depression, and it's sometimes been pretty debilitating for me. And this is something I have a personal interest in. I want us as a society to figure out how to combat depression, both how to recover from it as individuals, but how to prevent it on a large scale. And I think that our society is getting better at how to treat individual depression. There are established types of therapy that work. Uh, I'm personally skeptical of medications, and I think that they can be overprescribed, but I do think that they help some people, so that's another thing that's out there. Um, and there's also a lot of research on like diet and exercise and things like that, especially exercise can be really effective for fighting depression. But I see very little discussion of the social component of depression, and in spite of there being studies that establish that depression is contagious, that like there's not much discussion of this. And what, what is meant by depression being contagious? This means that if someone close to you becomes depressed, and by depressed I mean they have clinically measurable symptoms of depression. There are all these uh, scales and like checklists that you can use to determine if you or someone else has depression, and they're pretty effective. They hold up to like statistical scrutiny. So basically, if someone close to you becomes depressed, then you become at higher risk of depression doesn't guarantee that you're going to become depressed, but it increases the likelihood that you become depressed. Similarly, if people close to you recover from depression, it increases the likelihood that you too will do that if you are struggling with depression. So it's like people's depression risk and uh, rate of recovery is influenced by people in their social network. How does this happen? Uh, if you think about it, and if you have experience with depression, I think it can be kind of obvious. Depression is influenced by a lot of things. For me, this is a real key element. It's influenced by your way of thinking. There are certain ways of thinking about things, ways of interpreting events, that can make you at greater risk of depression. And like, one of them is if you have like all or nothing thinking. So, an example of like a depressed thought process or thought pattern might be, if I'm in school, and I fail an exam, I might have a thought process that goes like, oh my god, I failed this exam, I'm going to fail the whole class, I'm so terrible at this subject, and it sort of like spirals out of control. Like, what, what started with like one negative experience has already jumped to like, I'm terrible at this subject. And it can go much farther than that. Like, it can go to, I'm going to fail out of school, I'm a complete failure. It may sound ridiculous to you, but to people who struggle with depression, that kind of thought process can be very easy to fall into. The thing about it, though, is that we all hear people around us expressing ideas like that, or expressing different ideas on a daily basis, and people learn from others by examples. So I might be in college, like, at the lunch table, and someone's like, oh my god, I failed this exam, and then someone else might respond to them, oh, like, it's alright, that professor gives really hard exams, or something like that. And that is a little idea right there that can protect them from depression. Like, maybe they are at risk of going down that negative thought spiral, but if they get this little piece of evidence, well, th this professor gives particularly hard exams, it might protect them. I'm just giving this as an example of how these little social exchanges, as we go through our day, can either make us more or less vulnerable to depression. People may not think about these things, especially if they themselves don't have experience with depression. But one thing I've seen many times is people 
voicing ideas that to me are kind of dangerous. Ideas that if I start believing in those ideas, it becomes very easy to get caught up in that negative spiral of thoughts that in extreme cases can lead into feelings of hopelessness and even suicidal thoughts. But like some people might not be vulnerable to depression, but they might still be voicing these thoughts. So it's like these thoughts and ideas can propagate through their heads and propagate through these networks of people. I think that's one way depression can spread. Another is through behaviors. People tend to pick up behaviors from people around them. So it's like, if my friends are into a certain type of activity, they might ask me to come along. It's like, hey, do you want to go on a bike ride? Or like, hey, I'm going dancing, do you want to come dancing with me? Well, those are both types of exercise, so if the people close to me are engaged in exercise, then I'm more likely to engage in exercise myself. Similarly, they might ask me to do something sedentary, like, hey, do you want to like sit at home and watch a movie or whatever? And so then, that might influence me to be more sedentary and get less exercise. These things may seem subtle, but like, as a whole, like these behaviors, which may increase or decrease risk of depression, propagate through social networks too. In addition to these things propagating through social networks, they also are part of our culture. Like, if you think about the culture in the United States as a whole, uh, things like exercise and things like ways of thinking are embedded in our culture. There are certain things, activities out there that are widely available, and there are certain that are more hard to come by. And I think that, like, there are all these cultural notions of success, and these cultural narratives of like how to interpret what happens to us in our daily life. And I think that there are elements of culture that can make us more or less vulnerable to depression too. Uh, I'm just like scratching the tip of this subject here, but I want us to start talking about this and start thinking about this. I don't think that depression is strictly an individual problem. It certainly manifests in individuals, but I think it has the social component to it, and also a cultural component. And I think that when we start thinking about those things, we start getting all these insights of like, changes we could make to society and culture as a whole that could help protect people from depression. And also, uh, for people who don't personally struggle with depression, it can give us insights into how to protect other people close to us. I sometimes think that people who don't struggle with mental illness can sometimes be a little bit careless in terms of like passing on ideas that might be more dangerous to other people than they realize. So I think that especially listening to people who have dealt with depression and other mental illness and listening to them about what types of ideas they feel are most harmful, um, that can be really helpful. I also think there are benefits to everyone, like maybe you don't personally feel vulnerable to depression, but you might be happier and more productive if you can sort of get rid of some of these unhealthy ways of thinking in your own life too. Uh, so I think there are additional benefits to be had by everyone. Yeah, I hope this has been thought-provoking, and I want to talk more about this, so I'd love to hear from you if you had any particular element where you're like, yeah, I'm curious about this one thing, talk more about that, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you!